All right, let's get started. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon uh, for friends and colleagues in the Middle East. My name is Danny Seabright, the president of the US UAE Business Council, and I want to welcome you today to a very, very special conversation with His Excellency Faisal al Banai, the CEO and managing director of EDGE. Um, his Excellency is one of those transformative leaders who makes his mark on those companies and industries that he touches. He is now making his mark on the UAE defense sector where he leads EDGE, which has distinguished itself as the first ever company in the Middle East to be ranked among the top 25 largest defense industrial companies in the world. During today's conversation, His Excellency will discuss EDGE's goals and objectives in the defense market as well as outline opportunities for partnership in the, with US defense firms. We have also asked His Excellency to discuss the impact of recent developments in the region, including the Abraham Accords and the $23 billion plus arms sales package between the US and the UAE. In the process, our intent is to help set the stage for IDEX which will open on Sunday next week in Abu Dhabi. And this is meant to be a curtain raiser, as we say, for what is the region's largest and most important defense trade exhibition. I should say IDEX and NAVDEX because NAVDEX occurs alongside. Attendees, if you would please use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screens for any questions that you have for His Excellency. I am going to call out one organization uh, who's a longtime partner and friend and very, very uh, critical to our work in the U with the UAE, and that's the AmCham in Abu Dhabi, who will be hosting its uh, biannual breakfast uh, for the defense community on Sunday morning. And uh, I'm sorry I won't be able to be here, I, be there uh, for the event. I was telling His Excellency this will be the first time in over 20 years of attending IDEX that I won't be able to attend because of COVID. But we, we, our friends at AmCham have put together a wonderful event, and and their director Liz Bineski is on the call today, and uh, we're very very happy that that we can help participate and contribute to a very successful IDEX as well. Without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce. His Excellency Faisal al Banai, who has served as the CEO and Managing Director of EDGE since its inception in 2019. His Excellency previously founded Axiom Telecom, the largest distributor of mobile devices in the Middle East, and the cybersecurity company Dark Matter. He also serves as the Secretary General of the Advanced Technology Research Council in Abu Dhabi. Sir, the floor is yours for opening remarks, and then we will be in conversation for question and answer. Please. Thank you very much. And uh, welcome, and thank you for, for all the joiners. Uh, I guess I will try not to give a very long uh, speech about who Edge is. I'll, I'll give a quick high-level intro and, and leave it more for an interactive uh, Q&A session uh, in that regard. So to summarize, uh, where we are. Uh, November of 2019 is when Edge Group was launched. And so that's just, you know, under a year and a half uh, now, a year and a couple of months. And within that uh, year and a couple of months has been nearly a year of COVID. <laughs> it's been, uh, it's been interesting. Uh, uh, it's been an interesting journey. Uh, Edge, uh, for who that, who of you that is not familiar, uh, was made up of the consolidation of nearly 24 companies that got pulled together 
under each group. So these are all the assets that are owned by the country in the defense and security sector uh, to be brought under one group so that we can really unify the vision, we could unify the roadmap, we could accelerate our capabilities uh, and really build uh, uh, a very strong capability in, in, in the country. High level info on, uh, on edge, we are nearly 24 companies. We have around 12,000 plus staff. Uh, we, our revenue is uh, $5 billion plus uh, annually. Uh, and we have five clusters or five domains that we cater for. We've grouped our companies into the platform cluster, uh, airborne, land, and, and sea uh, platforms, uh, weapons, uh, everything from a bullet to a smart, uh, uh, smart weapon, uh, electronic warfare, uh, cyber defense, and mission support, things like MRO and, and, and so forth. Uh, so all our companies have grouped into these, into these uh, uh, domains. And in summary, what we stand for and why we were created, and hence what you'd see from us in the, in the coming period, we have three or four key objectives. One, the creation of edge is to strengthen building sovereign capabilities. Capabilities that the country can rely on to be able to defend itself uh, uh, and defend its assets in, in, in this regard. Uh, uh, the, the other objective that we have is an objective related to us also looking to be a prominent key player in, in selling smart technology globally. So the aim of Edge is not only to cater for the UAE. The aim of Edge is to use UAE as the anchor client, but at the same time, to become a large player in the UAE that is promoting and developing smart solutions and smart technologies. And I'm highlighting on the word smart because we're not really trying to compete on the general commodity part of the market. Uh, we're not really trying to compete in the low end part, the very basic part of the market. Yes, we might have some of that for our own need, but we are here to be a player that's well-versed and has key strength and smart solutions. And we'll talk about it in more details later on. What does that mean? Last but not least, many people think Edge is created purely due to defense. And although that is a critical part of what EDGE stands for, the sovereignty, defending the nation, but, but EDGE is also trying to be part of the UAE strategy of moving to the knowledge economy. At the end of the day, having a large defense player where the country, you know, it's a known fact that the country spends a sizable amount of money on its defense capability to secure its nation, we are rooting that money and that investment to build smart technology, smart capability, grow talent in the UAE, in this area, so that we become a knowledge exporter, we become a technology exporter. And today it could be defense, by the way. But as we all know, a lot of these defense technology find themselves also in the civilian sector in that regard, whether in autonomous or in many other fields. And we feel that edge would play a role in the UAE's vision of moving to the knowledge economy, building that advanced technology hub and becoming a large anchor place for talent to come globally, but also talent to grow locally and really join advanced technology, regardless of what advanced technology does in that regard, whether it's military or civilian down the line. So this is where we stand overall. And if we wanna talk about our DNA and we will answer some of these questions in the Q&A, we, Although we are a relatively new group, yes, the companies have been there since a while, but the DNA we are trying to ensure we have is about speed. So partners that deal with us know that we can move with speed. We can decide very fast. We know what we want. We are extremely nimble in our approach. At the same time, we are a company that is trying to be very creative in its approach. We want to be very practical. Not every technology has to be created from scratch. There are many technologies today that are available in off the shelf, off the shelf commercial market, 
in that regard that you can clearly integrate with what you need in the defense and really accelerate your product development in, in this regard. Not everything has to start from a military base in, in, in this area. Uh, so speed is a key part for us. Being practical of using hybrid technology that comes from commercial space and then adding the ingredients required from a defense really accelerates what we can do, how fast we can come to market. And last but not least, us being agile and us being very creative in our approach and what we want to do. So that is the DNA we're trying to build. That's the type of relationships that we want to have with people. And we recognize we will not build everything ourselves. We recognize it's not a matter of there are many of the defense contractors, although we might build products that might sound that competes with them, but many of them are also our partners. There are things that we will build together. There are things that we will build our, uh, alone. And I think that's where there is a massive opportunity for small and medium companies for us. And we have a lot of focus on small to medium companies. So this is my uh, high level umbrella, as they say, because I want to leave uh, the rest in the Q&A and you know, we get a bit deeper in the discussion. Your Excellency, thank you. And, and that was a wonderful sort of scene set or opening overview, if you will. Um, we, we, I want to just remind uh, the audience, to, if you have a question, please put it in the Q&A and we'll see if we can address it. We can't talk about the UAE's uh, you know, activity, work, progress in the defense space with, without mentioning the, vis the vision of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, and the Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces. He inaugurated EDGE, as you said, less than two years ago in November 2019, with a clear vision and a clear sense for the future of where he wanted the company to go. At the time, you remarked, the solution to address hybrid warfare lies at the convergence of innovations from the commercial world and the military industry. You just touched on this a little bit in your opening, but can I press you to elaborate a little bit more on this very, very important idea? We, we have this in the US and in, in the Western defense industries, uh, the, the co combination of commercial and military, but it's, a, it's taking on a, a very different and a, and a different track in the UAE. And I'd like to ask you to say a bit more if you could. I think, I think it's an important question that you, that, that you touched on. And it's an area that we are trying to find a way to leverage to the max. At the end of the day, uh, you could call it an advantage, you call it a disadvantage. We like to call it advantages. We are still a young company, which means at the same time, we don't have a long legacy of products. We don't have uh, the same um, um, uh, historical foundation as many of the large defense contractors do. In one way, yes, you could say it's a disadvantage. You don't have all of that asset base. Frankly, I see it as a massive advantage because we are technically still young, we're still fresh, which means there are a lot of technologies. Let's use an example. Today, if we talk about autonomous vehicles, the type of sensors that are on these autonomous vehicles or commercial drones in terms of the LIDAR sensors or the type of sensors you need for the car to be autonomous, many years ago, these technologies would be very proprietary to defense industry. Extreme required to defense industry in, in this regard that they had to be built from scratch and they cost a lot of money. Today, there are a number of technologies, whether it is vision-based technologies or radar-based technologies or other technologies that are available in the commercial industry where you can take part of these building blocks, partner with very small, with small to medium companies that are very innovative. They're not defense players. They're, they have very interesting vision-based technology or a very interesting radar type technology sensor in that regard. I'm using this on an example like this. I mean, there are many where we can partner with them, take that, we can then add in the flavor, the nuance, the use case scenario that we require from a military point of view. We could take that in and do further tuning if required, but frankly, someone has already built that technology. It's already at commercial price. It's already, uh, uh, extremely nimble. It's very agile in terms of how it develops and how it refreshes. These are the type of partners that we've been looking for. And we, when we will discuss, uh, you know, when we present ourselves in NIDEX, you will see a number of products that we, we, I mean, although we've not even been a year and a half, 
but in our autonomous capabilities for drones and so forth, you'll see a whole range of autonomous drone capabilities that we are launching, where a year and a half ago, actually a year and four months ago, actually we didn't have any. We are presenting a whole gamut of products in that regard that are coming now in the pipeline because we're really finding these hybrids. We are finding very interesting companies from around the world that have interesting niche technologies. And we're really bringing that in and then adding the kind of robustness or the kind of you know, military grade or whatever it may be that needs to be brought in. And yes, maybe that can't solve every type of solution you want, but frankly, we're really finding it very interesting to be able to launch the type of solutions that we are launching in, in this area. And I think that's the type of hybrid approach. That's the type of you know, looking for these companies and not just looking them at companies that are clearly marked as defense sectors in that regard. Thank you, sir. And, and the, the USUA Business Council has a, a broad membership of companies, not just focused on the defense space, but focused in so many of these other verticals that you're mentioning. Uh, and I know that they're all interested in speaking with you and, and, and meeting with you and your team at IDEX to learn more. But you also spoke uh, when Edge was created about the need to disrupt an antiquated military industrial complex, uh, which is generally stifled by red tape and brings products to market uh, and find a way to bring products to market faster and at more cost effective price points. I've worked with the UAE defense industry for many, many years now, and I'm curious to understand how EDGE is doing in that regard. How are you achieving that goal of, 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 of a cheaper product uh, faster, more efficiently? Uh, as you said, it was one of the key things we committed ourselves to when we launched, is that we want to be able to launch faster, we want to be more practical in the way we, we build things. They want to be more agile in cutting red tape. And if I want to touch on two or three examples that shed light on what we said. Today, uh, within a year and a half, we now have a much more clearer, if, in, in many countries or many industries, to agree with your defense sector or your defense industry on what, if you start from scratch and you say, what do you want really for the next five years, product-wise, solution-wise, and, and all of these things, and what should we build and what should we invest in? Everything from agreeing what to build, to allocating budgets to what to build, to getting started. Normally, this takes a couple of years of many, many, many committee meetings, and long discussions, and all of these things just to come to an agreement. Forget funding, forget starting. We've managed since launch to create very clear roadmap for our smart weapon category, for our autonomous capability category, and for our electronic warfare category, where we have now a roadmap for the next three to five years of agreed key base products. We've already agreed spec, we've already agreed funding, we've already started development, and actually we'll see some of them in IDEX in this regard. This is all within one year and four months uh, in, 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 in this space. We are able to internally as a country cut down dramatically in the rate tape of what does it take from a client to talk to industry, to talk to regulator, to talk to the key leadership stakeholder and get decisions done. And that, because many of the times and many defense contracts others will tell you, Sometimes it's not the fact of how long it's taking you to build, it's how long it takes you to get to that decision to start building that's taking so long in, in this regard. And we've dramatically cut down without any compromise, but just really cutting down all the red tape and clarifying roles and clarifying responsibilities. So one area is we have a very clear view of what are we building, how are we building it, funding it, and getting started with it. Two, because we are starting to leverage technologies that we built, but also technologies from open market and commercial space and other players in that regard, we managed to accelerate some products that we are bringing to market. Accelerate, but other than accelerate, even bring it to lower cost. So some of the drones and other loitering ammunitions that we'll be announcing, they come at a very competitive price with a very advanced technology in, in, in this regard that you I don't want to spoil IDEX's uh, showcase, but I can definitely say from now, you will see a number of loitering solutions 
and we are only announcing partial of the products that are at the pipeline in that regard. So a number of product solutions that you will see in the pipe that have leveraged either uh, the speed of us moving internally or have leveraged tapping into partners that are accelerating our ecosystem in terms of building blocks or which might be relevant for the audience today, talking to partners and saying, look, you have this piece of technology. Let me further co-invest with you. Let me further give you some money and some other resources together. Let's further modify the subsystem, the technology block, whatever that you have, and let's accelerate bringing that into our industry. The red tape required normally in other countries to do so is extremely long to even approve such vendors and you know someone that you didn't know from not knowing them till the time that they are integrated in your supply chain is a very long time. For us, since we know what we want, we're able to speak to companies that already have something interesting for us, quickly decide on joint investment, joint development. And there is a number of subsystems that we've invested with partners that today we've managed to build our own indigenous subsystems with them because we've accelerated partnering with small to medium companies. And frankly, we're, we are gaining more with small to medium companies than the large guys. It's not that we don't want to partner with the large guys, but the small to medium guys are hungry, are fast, and are action oriented. So, so, sir, let me press you on that a little bit because we have a question in the chat box that I want to, before we go to the DNA of Edge, I want to I want to summarize this question if I can. The, the gentleman is saying uh, that, that if he understands it correctly, Edge's mission is to learn from the established OEMs, the big guys, as you say, uh, through partnerships, and then produce indigenous products and services um, that will eventually compete with them in some way. And, and I, I think you just mentioned one of the incentives of why some OEMs and smaller companies would wanna do this with you, but maybe you could talk a little bit more about why some of the, the OEMs, some of the smaller companies shouldn't be afraid of you, that they're, that they're helping create the competitor of the future and talk about how you're creating partnerships. I think it's a, a great question. If it wasn't asked, I would find a way to bring it in because it's an important question to answer. And that, so I have a few key points to address in, in, in that area. One, we clearly recognize we are not a player that can build everything. Actually, no one can build everything in, in, in that regard. So yes, we want to focus on areas that are very critical for our defense. So our key priority when I mentioned objective is sovereign capability to defend ourselves. We can't build everything. There are specific technologies that we want to build. So one, we're not a builder of everything. Two, today, in, in today's world, the line is very blurred when you say competition, or, 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 or partners in that regard. Because at the end of the day, yes, today we work with many of the established players where we buy products to secure our nation. But at the same time, many of these large, let me start with the large player, the large established players also want to sell solutions in these markets, also want to develop new products in that regard. And they want sometimes launch clients, they want committed clients for some of these orders. And that's where we work very closely with them in bringing these products to market and tuning these products for our client need. And instead of trying to focus on, well, Edge is gonna compete with me in this product. Some of these clients are saying, I would rather just not be a seller. I'd rather be a guy that is helping build this product, do something with them. Yes, they might learn certain things, but there is many other products to also keep doing with them. So there is a whole pipeline of things to be done because at the end of the day, it's not that we all gonna build products and then gonna go to sleep for the next 20 years because no more products will be developed. There is a continuous need for more products to be developed. And I think us being a true partner, and I'm sure if I name some of the large contractors in the US, there are many things that they do with their partners in Europe and so forth where joint development happen. Do they mean their competition? Yes, some of them are competition to each other, but they see value in partnering and certain things. So on the small to medium guys, frankly, it's a choice. And you could have a lens that says, well, I'm building a competitor, or you could have a lens that I'm looking to build a close partner that's going to work with me on many products 
in that regard. Because frankly, whether anyone likes it or not, we are going to be a serious player in this game. And when we partner together, it means we have a longer term relationship to do many more things together. Not partnering doesn't mean we're not going to get there. It just means we're going to get there with someone else in that regard. So I think every scenario for the small to medium, at least what we've seen till now, these small to medium players are looking for good anchor clients that can move very fast with them, help further mature their product, help further give them scale in, in that regard. And sometimes, by the way, so that we will take this and try to replicate it. Frankly, I don't have the bandwidth to build everything. If, if, the, if the partners give me a technology that I have enough assurance from a security point of view and from a use point of view to integrate it in our products, I have no interest to re rebuild that product again. I'll try to focus on the 110 other priorities I have uh, in this regard to solve uh, uh, from that area. It's not that we don't have many challenges uh, to solve. So what we've seen is, actually we made an announcement during the launch. We said any player can decide to be one of three relationships with us. You can be a valued commercial relationship where we buy products from you, we value you, we, we like you, and we are purely a buy and sell relationship. That's a valued commercial relationship. Or you could be a valued partner where I buy some stuff from you and you help me build some stuff uh, in, in that regard. The third, you are a valued strategic partner now because I buy stuff from you uh, you help me in some technologies, but you also buy some subsystems from me. This, uh, so it's a full relationship. And what we are telling to our partners is, we don't force you to select any. It's up to you what makes sense for your business. You want to be a commercial, a valued commercial relationship, or a valued partner, or a strategic partner. It's fully up to you. But by the way, if you are a valued partner, strategic partner or just a general partner, it means we will also prioritize buying from you what we need to buy because you're helping us also in our strategy as a company. So it's never a, a, a black and white solution. I think we live in a world where there are many things happening. There are many players in the market and we are moving fast and we are looking for open-minded guys that really want to partner. And if it makes sense for you, we can move fast. If that particular transaction doesn't make sense, any sense, no problem. I'm sure other transactions will. Sir, that's those are very important nuances that you um, that you discuss, and um, I, I want to just ask the impetus for His Highness's um, push to develop this indigenous capability. Um, you know, every sovereign country wants its own indigenous capability. It wants to be able to take care of its own defense needs in time of a crisis or war and not have to rely on others. Is there a worry, has there been a worry over the last decade that traditional partners have pulled away from uh, the UAE and others in the region, whether it's whether it's Germany uh, or the UK or even the United States for that matter? Is this part of the reason and the rationale or is it is it the more traditional reason of just wanting to be a sovereign, you know, having a sovereign capability? I think, as we as we all know, today the, one of the fortunate things for UAE is we enjoy a great relationship with many countries. Uh, in this regard, we are fairly a neutral country. We have great relationship with many countries in this regard, and great relationship with many countries for a long history, like the U.S. Uh, in this area, where we enjoy a very long strategic relationship in in this space. But at the same time, any country that is maturing and evolving. And you know, we're, we, we are in our 50th year as an anniversary of, as a country, definitely wants to keep maturing how it relies on itself for critical capabilities. It doesn't mean that today it's, um, um, uh, it has a concern that a partner, whatever has pulled out. But at the end of the day, we're living in changing worlds. We, we, there are, different evolving parameters happening in this world. There are different uh, 
administrations that happen in every country uh, in, in, in this regard. And any nation that feels it's reaching that capability would want to at least ensure it can control critical sovereign defense capabilities. Again, no one can build everything, but critical capabilities that it can help defend itself when it needs to. But as I mentioned, edge is created to help defend the nation, but edge is created also to use the defense budget used to also create a strong conglomerate that can actually help. Let me use a, a, a great example. I use it with a lot of, of people here in the UAE. Many years ago, if you discussed with a student in the UAE, uh, that's extremely amazing in math. And you tell him, you know what? I want you to study masters in math and a PhD in math. The typical answer you would get from that UAE national would be, but I'm not looking to be a math teacher. Because in his mind, master and PhD in math, the only career he sees is a math teacher. But when you start creating large industries that are based on advanced technology, you can now tell the person graduating from Khalifa University or NYU or the other universities, by the way, if you study math, whatever, you can join my crypto team. You can join my AI team. You could join X, Y, Z. Suddenly we're helping to build that critical mass of knowledge economy in that regard than people. And I don't want to really undermine this. Edge is playing really two parts in the UAE strategy. One is the defense and the other is a very clear strategy is how are we going to move from selling the last barrel of oil in the country to being a knowledge economy? That's not going to happen by just wishing for it. It's going to happen by putting few anchor pieces on the floor and, that, and using money you're spending today to get there. So, sir, you're underscoring a very, very critical and important point, which is what you're doing in the defense vertical is part and parcel and very much uh, coordinated with what's happening in every other vertical in the UAE to create a knowledge economy for the future and for the, re and for the youth of the region uh, for the future. So very, very important. Um, I want to go into the just just a, two minutes on the DNA of Edge because it's important to know when you when you want to talk about where a company is going and where a group is going, it's important to talk about where you've come from. And um, at the time of its creation, Edge absorbed Emirates Defense and Industries Company, Tawaz and Holding, as well as Advanced Investments Group. Uh, there are a number of other indigenous players in the UAE defense market. My friends at IGG. Uh, who I'm very close with and think so highly of General Akabi. I think they uh, have some companies that were that were part of the Edge um, uh, uh, fusion, if you will. Edge consolidated over 25 entities and 12,000 people into a single company. And as you said, in the course of like the last 18 months, this is a massive undertaking. Can you speak a little bit about this integration? Some of the lessons you learned along the way, some of the times you pulled your hair out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, why, why, why and having, how's it progressing? <laughs> why, why having to go for, through COVID? <laughs> while, while doing COVID, exactly. <laughs> yes. I, think, uh, I think definitely it's one hell of a challenge. I mean, at the end of the day, you're inheriting all of these companies. You're inheriting different cultures. You're inheriting different mindsets. And you're really trying to transform all of that and put in, in mind and the culture we're trying to drive in mind. And then I'll address some of the things that we've been doing, in, as they say, in the kitchen to, to try to get there, is how do we make sure we leverage on few key DNAs we want to leverage on, which is we want to make sure we have a startup mentality mindset. Very fast. Let's move. And you know, when we say, I don't want to be like the traditional large contractors in that regard, is the way and speed that we want to move on things. So that startup mindset, the ability to decide, the ability to make quick decisions. So frankly, we don't have, I mean, when, when we took the company, we removed nearly every layer of committees we have. There are no committees. There are working groups with a head, and a head can decide, and a head can move. We are not managing by consensus. We're not managing by committees that are having to, you know, 60%, 70% have to agree on the direction and the trigger. 
Because then normally what happens, at least from my previous experience of my startups in that regard, you normally end up with the lowest denominator when you're managing by, by a committee structure, uh, many of your things. Uh, so part of the transformations we had to do is we had to put in extreme quick measures of bringing a lot of visibility and transparency to where we are. So putting in certain tools of, of tracking where we are, tracking our projects, uh, you know, seeing where the bottlenecks are, and really making that visible at a group level in this regard to senior management. So a big push on transparency in terms of where things are, a very aggressive push on re-streamlining all the DOA and removing many layers of committees and other sorts of layers that slow things down. In, in, in this regard, passing more authorities down to CEOs of companies and others, yes, with the right governance and the right side, but nevertheless, still putting that through. And we've been embarking now on a very ambitious program that we've finished all the exercise on it now, and we are now pressing the button for the next 12, 24, 36 months of a complete digital transformation I don't like to use acronyms like uh, industry 4.0, blah, blah, whatever, but a complete digital transformation of our industry. Backend, and when I mean backend, I mean finance, HR, PO, project management, everything, and front of the line, at the MRO level or at the factory level, there is a, in, in 21 and 22 and 23, there is a, there is a massive transformation that is going to happen to our industry when it comes to digitization. So one of the things that we are saying when we want to drive the DNA, we are saying we want to see ourselves as an advanced technology company that happens to be in the defense sector, not a defense player that is applying advanced technology. So from a DNA, and let's say it like this, if you, uh, if you mention Microsoft, do you say they're a defense contractor or they're a technology company? You say they're a technology company. But Microsoft does a lot of things with the defense sector in, in, in that regard. But its DNA is not a defense player. So we've been working on how do we re streamline our decision process? How do we streamline uh, our uh, transparency? How do we re streamline uh, uh, the information sharing and visibility and leveraging technology across the group? And how do we make the group entirely digital? In, on top of aligning our roadmap and, and doing the things that I mentioned in that regard about the weapons roadmap or the EW roadmap and other things, all of these things have been clearly fundamentals to really put the key building blocks in place to drive a clear sense of urgency. So if you talk to anyone in senior management on edge, they would tell you anything we need to do we need to do with a sense of urgency. And if you say, hi, when can we follow up this thing? And maybe there are some colleagues in this call that have interacted with us. They would hear from us, oh, you want to interact to us about this topic? We are ready to talk today. We are ready to talk tomorrow. Let's not wait for two weeks from now to kick off a workshop in, in that regard. So, and it's really trying to bring all of these things and it's not straightforward when you try to bring all of, all of these players together, but we still see ourselves as a young company. And I think it's still easier to do it than you know, taking a traditional company that's been out there for many, many years and then trying to change its culture. Well, changing culture is the hardest thing that a company faces, as you know. And when you're, when you're kludging or fusing together all of these disparate companies and trying to create a new common culture for all of them, it's, it's a huge undertaking. So bravo to you, sir, for your efforts in that regard and apparently for your success. Uh, I'm getting a lot of questions uh, regarding the future and areas that you're uh, investing in now, or as you said, that are in the pipeline. Uh, you, you said Edge's activities are organized around five core clusters, platforms and systems, missiles and weapons, cyber defense, electronic warfare intelligence, and mission support. Um, then you talked about Edge, you described Edge as an advanced technology group that develops disruptive set solutions for defense and beyond. Disruptive is a fantastic term and it's what we all have to do in the defense industry. What types of disruptive solutions are you pursuing now? Um, 
I, I mean, I know you said you want to save some news for uh, IDEX, but give us a teaser of some things that you're going to show off at IDEX or some things that you have in the pipeline that our companies that are listening today can, um, can think about how they might come and talk to you at IDEX about solutions that on which they're working at the moment as well, please. So in, although I mentioned the five domains that, that we cater for, where we are really pushing and we're really pushing very hard is one on autonomous capabilities. Uh, so we are investing very aggressively on building autonomous capabilities, whether they're UAVs, UGVs, or, or you know, boats in, 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 in that regard. And you will see in IDEX a whole host of a suite of, from micro drones to all the way to larger drones and UAVs in, 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 in this area. You will see a, a sample of unmanned ground vehicles that we have there. So autonomous in general and unmanned in general is an area we're investing in very heavily because especially for us as a country, we're a small country and we're not a very large population. And I'm sure in every country, every soldier and every human being matters, but when you're small, it even matters much more in, in that regard, which means you seriously need a force multiplier of unmanned products in that regard to help you. And hence where it applies today for the audience is people that have very interesting sensor technologies, that have very interesting vision-based technologies, that have very interesting fusion-based technologies in that regard, they are very critical when it comes to unmanned or, or autonomous uh, space. So autonomous is an area that will be making a number of announcements this year. At the beginning of the year, we have some more announcements towards the end of the year. And the other area is we're making a number of announcements in the electronic warfare space, whether in the jamming technology and other related uh, technologies in, in, uh, in this area. Uh, and uh, uh, we are making a, a number of key announcements when it comes to smart weapons. But again, even when you say smart weapons, it's building these solutions, but everything today is about how that weapon is fused with further sensors, IP connectivity, and all sorts of other sensors and, 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 and data points to help it make much more advanced decisions in this regard, I mean, whatever you called smart weapon five years ago is a bit different than smart weapons today. And frankly, it would be a bit different than smart weapons five years from today. And it's all about how that weapon is connected. How do you create swarm technology? And then many of these technologies are not proprietary to defense. They, they can happen in many other companies in this regard, and you can take it and use it and adapt it for the defense sector in that regard. So in summary, you will see big announcements around autonomous and unmanned. You will see good announcements towards electronic warfare. And you will see uh, uh, a number of announcements when it comes to smart weapons uh, in that regard. Now, it doesn't mean today our mission support like MRO. We have a massive MRO business uh, in the country for airborne and, and, and land. And there are many technologies that today can be catered for the, the civilian car industry or other industries in that regard that is as applicable to an armored vehicle that is a military armored vehicle when it comes to MRO. And how do you fine tune that process and other, and other areas? Those MRO businesses are some of your legacy companies for sure uh, that, you've, that you've inherited and are fusing together. Uh, sir, I wanna pivot at this point. We have 15 minutes left and I wanna to pivot to talking about a little bit about the historic Abraham Accords. Our dear friend Ambassador Yusuf al Ataba and all that he did with His Highness and 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 the UAE to make this uh, this this incredibly important pivot in the Middle East happen uh, and be possible over the last six months. Um, uh, our 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 friends and colleagues at the uh, at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy, Dr. Michael Knights, asks a question. Um, and he says, I was embedded with the UAE armed forces in Yemen multiple times and have, have seen how dangerous drones and missiles were uh, on, you know, on the ground and on, on the battlefield there. You mentioned the importance of drones and swarming technology and things like that. But Michael says, the region desperately needs cheap, more capable missile defense. What are EDGE's plans in directed energy weapons for anti-missile defense, uh, drone defense? And is it true that you're cooperating uh, with Israel 
uh, with firms like Raphael on directed energy missile defense? And are you thinking about Iron Dome and three-way cooperation with the US uh, with, with Raytheon and, and, and Israel on missile defense? I know that's a multi faceted question, but it's the way I want to move into the it's a, a it's a it's a meaty question with with many sub questions in it. <laughs> yes sir so please over to you <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to air defense uh, air defense is definitely a critical area of a country defending itself uh, especially in today's world where there are all sorts of products coming in um, cheap drones and UAVs coming in in that regard and you can't shoot a million dollar missile on a drone that barely cost you know twenty thousand dollars or ten thousand uh, dollars or so forth uh, you will hear an announcement uh, in idex uh, related to uh, an air defense system as you know air defense has many layers has the long range the mid range the short range and you know there are many layers to to the air defense you will see step one of our air defense approach where we will announce uh, already a program that has started in that regard in the air defense uh, category where we are building uh, our air defense solution for part of these subsystems or sub layers uh, when it comes uh, to, to air defense. So there will be an announcement uh, about that. Um, uh, and it's actually a very interesting announcement uh, where uh, another uh, uh, player uh, uh, will also announce uh, leveraging of our solution within its own air defense system uh, in that regard, which actually says a lot about uh, a company that's been uh, a year and four months in where another large industrial player is actually taking our solution we're building it, and integrating it in its own air defense system in, in, in this regard. So, Air defense is important, you'll see us announcing. If we talk about the larger systems of air defense, uh, we've been having uh, conversations now with uh, some of the partners that you mentioned. And uh, I think we definitely have a high interest of looking at collaborating with uh, future advanced solutions uh, for the higher layers of air defense uh, in this regard with certain partners. And we currently have our conversations, let's see as it comes to flourishing, and then we make the right announcements in that area. But air defense, if I want to close that part of the question, is this important part for us. We are embarking on our own solutions there. And at the same time, we're also embarking on discussions with other partners where we further grow the air defense capability. Um, when it comes to how do we partner with <coughs> the US and Israel and you know, what's happening with the accord and all, and all of that. I think we've been having now very fruitful discussions with a number of players. Um, and with some of them, we're in advanced discussions of what we refer to as joint development, joint funding of programs that will benefit both sides. Um, uh, they are maybe bringing in the current building blocks. We are both investing in the next generation part with them, both resource and funding uh, wise. Um, and I think uh, between this year and next year, there will be further other announcements in this area of some other partnerships uh, that we're doing in relation to the, some of the topics you've touched on. But there will be some announcements that will already happen during IDEX time. Sir, I served in Israel with the, for the US government during the first Gulf War, and we brought Patriot battalions in to help defend the country. Uh, I, I worked at the Pentagon for 10 years, helping Israel uh, partner on a number of um, advanced R&D programs like the Aero Missile Defense. I was there at the beginning of Iron Drone. I was, uh, Dome, excuse me. I was there at the beginning of the Tactical High Energy Laser Program uh, in Israel. And I can tell you, there's very, very rich areas for cooperation, trilateral cooperation between our three Absolutely. countries. Absolutely. I know you know this, uh, but but these, the, the, the tech and the ability and the commitment that the Israelis bring to the table is first class, uh, in my opinion, in my experience, and working with American companies to create solutions that, that deal with all the layers, as you say, from, from Lockheed's THAAD system 
to Raytheon systems, uh, you know, this is very, very important for the defense of the region for the future, for coastal Absolutely. defense, for the drones and everything else. So hats off to you for all the work that you're doing in this space. Uh, touch, a, touch a moment on the, uh, the arms deals, uh, the, the arms packages, if you will, with the US. Obviously, the decision to sell Lockheed's Joint Strike Fighter to the UAE is also historic. And also, uh, and, and among among other systems, whether it's the the, the Reaper drones from from General Atomics, also is a, are huge new opportunities for cooperation and partnership going forward. What how how do you think about that for the future? Those 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 programs and that cooperation with the U.S. I think such programs uh, would uh, only lead to one direction, which is. A much closer cooperation, especially now that you have a player like Edge that have enough critical mass. So tomorrow with someone like Loki, while selling these planes, whatever, normally there's a lot of things that has to happen, integration, adding weapon suite, adding so many other things. Now that Edge is there, we, we are discussing with such partners and seeing how do we further add and integrate other systems in here to really make this very tailored to the client need in the country for their use cases and their missions and their operations in this regard. And due to Edge being here, we are able to have a much more constructive and fruitful discussion to be able to take it forward in that regard. Before we were small fragmented companies that can't really deal with a deal of this size. So today we are able to have that discussion. We're able to start thinking, how do we integrate and how do we frankly build other products that sit on these platforms? I mean, these platforms are going to live here for the next 20, 30 years. I mean, you don't buy F-35 to throw it away in six years. I mean, they're going to live for a while, which means you really need to start building systems and a base and other things to start catering for these platforms for many, many, many years to come. Well, we have a number of companies and a number of members who want to come talk to you, whether it's a company like Jacobs Engineering that wants to help you with uh, building the facilities that are required to, to take care of these systems or wh whatever it is. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of American technology and ingenuity to bring to the table here to help for the future. And, and uh, we look forward. I mean, I mean a, a good example related to, to this, uh, if you allow me to jump in. Today we have the, the, the facility in Al Ain, which is the Amrok uh, facility. One of the things that we are doing that our, our teams are talking to various players from around the world, and it applies to the discussion of F-35 and other things, is we're really trying to build, for a lack of a better word, a really a, a, a mall where you're bringing various partners from around the world, either in, in partnership mode or as a host mode or in whatever mode, for them to be in one large, I mean, it's amazing facility, in one large facility where you can really provide an integrated MRO integration capability and other type of capabilities in one place uh, uh, for all sorts of payload, for all sorts of things, really in one environment for the different platforms that we cater for, but frankly, that are happening in the region. And this, I mean, the, the, there are many of these platforms that are sold to many players in the region. And this can be a great place where in under one roof, where multiple services are offered from optic center to all sorts of payload integration centers to other things. And I think that's where also uh, we're having a number of interesting discussions with various partners from other, around the globe to really come under one roof through different equations, through different formulas. And sometimes they're just coming themselves. It's not that we're partnering with them, but they're being there. We give them some business, they do other things, uh, but then we, we for, for our clients, it's all an integrated facility in this regard. Thank you, sir. Uh, you froze up there for a minute, but uh, we, our, our, other, our other friends like AECOM and certainly Parsons are all interested in these opportunities and we'll want to talk to you about this facility at Al Ain that you're speaking of. So we have two minutes left here and I always like to close um, with a question uh, to try to help us, to help our viewers understand a little bit more about the person. And I'm going to ask this question this way of you. Um, 
uh, I'm losing you out. Your your picture froze. Can you can you repeat the the question? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's locking up here. The UAE uh, is a remarkable story of peace and progress in this region. What keeps you up at night? What do you tell your children uh, and your family about what you're doing to try to uh, meet these threats and meet these challenges? Um, for some that, that know, I, before taking this job, I was in the private sector. So I ran my own business. I was in the private sector. Actually, this is the first time I am an employee <laughs> in my life. Uh, and frankly, what excites me going from running your private business, regardless whether large or, or small and doing this job, is you get to see that you are helping to contribute to shape the destiny of the country and in the region, to help shape the defense of your country, to help shape change talent, enter this technology space, and really play a role, whether small or large, in the history of this country and building the next phase of this country, especially the knowledge economy part in, in that regard. And I, I'm saying it in that way because I think, yes, we, we are referring to defense. Yes, we are referring to technology, but I see it as a byproduct. The first product is we are building a knowledge economy. We are building a large base for advanced technologies in this regard, using the defense money to really build that and build a whole large partner ecosystem. Because again, we can't do things ourselves. And I think what you know motivates and gives the energy is at least being able to play a role in, 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 this, in this exercise uh, and in this journey. And I think uh, we are blessed, frankly, with the type of leadership we have that are extremely entrepreneurial, very ambitious to the vision of this country in, in, in this regard and very ambitious to what we want to achieve in the next few years in, in this country. And I think they've set their vision very clearly in being a key player in the, in the global eco space when it comes to advanced technology. And I have no doubt at all that we will be that player and we'll have many partners that we will both benefit in that journey. In that regard. So that's very important. Helping build and create your new young country is, is, is a wonderful, wonderful mission and vision. Sir, what do you worry about at night? Where do, what do you wake up in the middle of the night and you say, oh my God, I, I'm so concerned and worried about this. What, what, do, our, what do our viewers need to understand are your, is, is your worry for the future? I think it's all about uh, talent. We all, we all suffer getting the right talent uh, in, in that regard, either growing the right talent or getting the right talent to the country. And I think what worries me is as we grow, I want to make sure that we maintain what we refer to as our startup mentality, as our startup DNA. And last but not least, and I'm, we are extremely conscious about this, is the partners that work with us need to know we are very straightforward with them. We don't waste their time. And there's a win-win mindset in that regard. It's not a one-way street that we just want to gain from them because I come from the commercial world. I didn't work in the government. I didn't work in anywhere else. I run my businesses. And I know at the end of the day, this always needs to be a win-win for this to be long lasting. So it's very important for our partners and frankly, for some of your audience here today is we want to be known for being very frank and straightforward in what we want in our relationship, not wasting our partner's time, and really creating a clear win-win. And we tell, I tell this to all of the, your audience, whenever you feel you are not getting this from Edge, contact the senior management or contact me personally, because this is our DNA and this is what we stand for in, in that regard. Your Excellency, that's a fantastic way to end this discussion uh, on a very high note. Thank you very much. We will take you up on your commitment to that for sure. Um, this session, as I said, has been recorded. We'll make sure that there were, there's a lot of questions in the Q&A that we haven't gotten to, but my team will undertake to try to get folks answers. Uh, we wish you, sir, a very, very successful IDEX. We wish you and your team the best for your efforts and what you're doing to help build the UAE and make the Middle East region a safer place. Uh, Thank inshallah, you, sir. sir, have a wonderful, wonderful IDEX.
Thank you. And thank you for all the audience that you know, gave us part of their time for today. Thank you. Thank you and take care. All my best. Bye-bye.